Now then, uh, does pink stink uh, when it comes to girls' toys? Because some mums are now campaigning against the preponderance of pink stuff in Britain's toy shops. Uh, twins, uh, Emma and Abby Moore from London, both young mums, uh, want pink banished from the aisles of the early learning centre chain. Although they admit early learning centres are no worse than many other retailers, the stores do have a mission statement to help children explore the boundaries of their imaginations and creativity, to make learning fun and help children be all they can be. <laughs> <laughs> but the protesters say pink toy washing machines, cash registers and even pink globes don't do that. Instead, row upon row of pink stuff encourages an obsession with body image, which starts younger and younger, they say, and makes girls think beauty is valued over brains. Gender roles are becoming polarised far too young. That's another argument. But do they hold water? No, says the Earning Loading Centre. They're not. We sell toys in all kinds of colours, which is true. And it's not their fault manufacturers make so much pink tat. And anyway, where did all this boys in blue, girls in pink nonsense begin with? I mean, some say girls are, predis are predisposed to a fondness for pink because back when we were living in caves, women gathered fruit and being able to spot pink berries in a green bush was handy. That sounds quite dirty, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It does. Mm. <laughs> 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 Interestingly, <laughs> up until the 1940s, pink was the colour for baby boys. It was seen as a watered-down version of military red, you see. But some say it was the Nazis' habit of labelling homosexuals with a pink triangle that put pay to that. So, are you alarmed by the preponderance of pink stuff for girls, Larry? Yes, it's um, you again, our mother is, on the panel. It is. Um, <laughs> well, yes and no. I, mean, I've had, I had two boys and then I had a daughter and I was so thrilled not to have to play with Power Rangers anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I have slightly gone down the pink route. But it is shocking because when I was a kid, I mean, I'm one of three girls in my family, there wasn't this sea of pink. It's become worse and worse and worse. And there is, a, I think, a real concern. that, there, For example, there are these trainers now you can buy for little girls. And they advertise. Everybody knows what they are if you see in the ad. And you, they're all pink and they're all glittery and they come with little makeup sets. And, and, and there is this kind of Jordanisation of little girls yeah. that's a bit worrying that it is about being pretty and it's all about how you look. I mean, I, I watch Scooby-Doo with my kids. And oh, I say, yeah, very good, yeah. And I say to my boys and girls, now Velma's marvellous and she solves all the... Don't forget, Daphne, that's the one you want to be. I'm trying, but it is an uphill struggle. So actually, I think I completely support these mothers. They're saying something that's quite important. But of course, what the early learning centres should be doing is sourcing their own toys that aren't all pink. Okay, Michael, so, just, can I just, so tell them about the mirror that you have. Oh, your well, daughter, well, it's I, such my, a sweet my, story. my daughter has a little mirror, and you press a button on it, and it says, "Don't you just love being a princess?" <laughs> and when I have a bad day, Larry, Matthew, oh, I, I get the shocked. mirror out and I play it to myself. Are you playing to yourself? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> Fair play to you. Um, Michael, you've got pink, a uh, flash of pink there today. I've got pink and a little bit of blue uh, um, going on, so I've got two. Uh, I, I don't really know where the blue for boys and pink uh, for girls thing came from because I can only really just go on my childhood and I, I remember not caring. Yeah, but I, you're a boy. I, I guess, but I... I Do you not know girls? I mean, I know girls my age, which is quite young, <laughs> <laughs> who drive... Pink cars, yeah. I've got a girlfriend pink say. mobile phones, yeah, and me. And always go out wearing something pink. Yep. Mm. Rosie Ash, my girl, an actress, she has everything pink, including the car, the mobile, everything. I mean, it's... I don't, think, I don't see any problem in yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I see any problem with it. I remember as well, when I, went, when I was about 17, I bought this pink cap. And I remember my sister telling me I was crazy, but then it became this sort of fashion yeah, statement. But boys, at in, a stage boys in guys. pink is actually it's a sort of it's a sort of passive confidence. Thing, yeah, because you? you're not supposed to. It's like you're dancing on, on, on the kind of oh the line I'm of sexuality. I'm so com yeah, yeah, comfortable with my yeah. manhood that I can wear pink. <laughs> girls in pink, to me, it's like where's the imagination? Why aren't you rebelling against something? Why aren't you blurring the lines? Why do you want everything to be fluffy and pink and nice? That's the point, isn't it? What colour would you want them to wear? Black? Anything, anything that breaks. Well, isn't it interesting that girls when they reach a certain age, Want to wear become black. goths and wear black and rebel against true. Yes, That is absolutely. true. But I don't think there's any problem at all. How um, would you feel as a parent, Lowry, if your girl didn't like pink at all? I'm hoping... She rebelled against uh, no, pink. well, my, my eldest son has already said, who's nine, that he's going to be an emo when he grows up. Love is a useless burden, according to... He'd be kept <laughs> <laughs> um, So I'm already fully prepared for that. And actually, no... Love I, is my, a useless yes, burden. <laughs> he's nine. That's what he does. OK, darling. Um, and okay. so, actually, you know, I hope that girl, more girls do rebel, and I okay. feel guilty now that I've, pl I've played into this. Right. Wow, there's yeah, an admission. Let's throw it open to you. Does pink stink for girls? Uh, we have Emma on line one. Emma, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, you're not 
the Emma from the campaign, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, right. Oh, well, uh, hello. Uh, how's it going? Um, it's going really well. We're, we're absolutely um, thrilled by the um, attention that we've got, but we're also um, really amazed by the amount of support that we've got from parents, and not just parents, from um, anyone that's got an interest in kind of child... Right, Emma, 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 time is short. Tell Biggins why it's an issue. It's an issue because um, we think that this whole um, concentration on pink and fluffy and sparkly for girls really sets very narrow um, boundaries for children about what it is to be a girl. And so anybody that doesn't want to be like that is kind of somehow not normal. And yes. we think it's not just for girls. We think that also boys as well who see all of this then grow up with an expectation that girls are obsessed by what they look like, um, want to be pretty and beautiful, and that's the only thing that matters to them. So we just want to make sure that girls have real strong role models um, and that they have the opportunity to enjoy, you know, their childhood. They're not without, boxed in. Um, They're not sorry. boxed into one exactly, narrow way of exactly. thinking. I mean, it's it's so, about choice. Isn't it shocking now when you do surveys at what little girls want to be when they grow up and they all say things like Jordan, don't they? All that's, right, wags. Yeah. that's really worrying. Yes. OK, uh, Emma, uh, well, good luck with the campaign. Time is short, I do apologise. Let's have another. We have Rachel online too. Rachel, good morning. Hi, yeah. Uh, Hi there. Um, uh, I'm just ringing just to say, yeah. Um, my daughter, she's uh, three years old and she loves trains, trucks <laughs> and I've about parenting. It's all about, uh, I mean, I used to work on trains and my husband's a HGV driver. Right, OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though, even though it, I, I'd agree it's all about parenting, as a parent, when you go to a toy shop, are you not overwhelmed by pink? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, because I, I kind of felt a bit awful that my daughter likes, um, well, actually... Um, get looked at when I go and buy like a truck and there's my three-year-old daughter to kind of you know wears the uh, party dresses and the mm. pink stuff and the makeup but she's not into any of that she's I quite wonder... an independent little girl and that's what she they, they say at school I hope I hope she stays that way but I think that the problem and, and I think this is why the campaign is so useful is you know she is probably in the minority and there's going to be a lot of pressure on her to conform as she gets older and I think perhaps yeah, yeah it's true you do um, I wish we had more time on this. I'm sorry, we've, we've got to take a break. Um, thank you for the call, Rachel.